Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're looking at the R41 Star Chaser. This is a multi-role Starfire manufactured by Porsche Kessel Drive Incorporated. So, uh, you know, this is one of those ships that was actually created for, uh, I believe, X-Wing vs. TIE Fighter. Um, let's see. Yep. Uh, yep. Uh, the Balance of Power campaigns, X-Wing Alliance, uh, Jedi Knight, Mysteries of the Sith, Force Unleashed 2. You know, really, this is a fighter that was just purely created just for the video games. And it was converted uh, or created and brought into the role-playing game. So here we have with D6 stats going for it. But, uh, you know, first let's kind of cover our backstory here on Wikipedia. Uh, Characteristics-wise, the Star Chaser was built as a solid... Starfighter capable of competing with the Z-95 Headhunter. It had a good balance of speed, weaponry, and durability, but lacked heavy armor or internal hull bracing, which often made it vulnerable to well-placed enemy hits. It had a slight advantage over the Headhunter with its ion cannons, and in the hands of an expert pilot, could pose a considerable threat even to newer Starfighters as was the case in the clash between the Renki Pirates and the Galactic Empire at Kalamir. Uh, the craft featured a flat, lifting body with diamond-shaped nose. It had S-foils mounted aft and was powered by the HK model YB, uh, 4YB ion fusion engines, as well as a Class II hyperdrive. The ship's drawbacks, which included light armor, low maneuverability, and low power, uh, low powered shields, uh, prevented its success in the market. A two-seat version named the R-42 Star Chaser existed. However, this version, despite being superior in some aspects, proved less popular with the primary market of the R-41, and only a few hundred were ever built. Our history uh, goes on here. Uh, production delays meant the craft came out later than the Headhunters. By the end of the Clone Wars, the Starfighter was already outmatched by newer starships. And by the time the conflict between the Empire and the Rebellion, it was generally considered outdated. This did not prevent resource-strapped Rebellion from using the R-41 in early battles against the Empire's newer TIE fighters. Uh, as evidence in the assault on Camino, the R-41 seemed to disappear from the Rebel fleet once the X-Wing became available. Cash-strapped Rebel cells were forced to use it, though. Later in the Galactic Civil War, it was found in the hands of third-party organizations such as Black Sun and pirates like the uh, Renneke, uh, who preferred it because of its reliability since regular maintenance was not often available for these groups. The R-41 was a favorite for uh, favorite ship for Abran Mar, Lieutenant of the Crime Lord Takara. Uh, Mara Jade stole the R-41 while escaping from the, muggler, from the smugglers, if I can only speak here this evening, uh, Kirabani's base on... Rathali, uh, which was recovered, or with a recovered Jedi holocron in about 10 ABY. And of course, we already kind of went over some of the appearances, Spices and Spies, Star Wars, The Clone Wars, Comic uh, 615. So this really kind of comes along later on. Um, the Clone Wars and all that really was more of the uh, Wizards of the Coast, not the West End games. So there is very likely a uh, set of stats on this for uh, Wizards of the Coast if you're playing that role-playing game. Um, but if, like me, you really prefer the D6 version, we have stats coming up right here. So looking at what we have here... Um, this is considered more of the Rebellion era that this is being placed in. It is a space superiority fighter. 
Starfighter scale. It's at roughly 11 meters long, uh, has a crew of one, has a cargo capacity of 35 kilograms, consumables for two days, a times one hyperdrive. So this deviates a little bit from what the earlier write-up was. But keep in mind, if this is saying this is from the Rebellion era, chances are this is going to be something that was modified beyond what was originally uh, made. Um, we don't have a backup hyperdrive, so whatever hyperdrive you have here, if this is your times one or if you have a times two version, we do not have a backup hyperdrive, although we do have a full nav computer. Which is, you know, on, on older Starfighters, it is a little bit, uh, even on newer ones, it, it's something that you don't see all that often. Typically, you'll have a droid brain that is taking care of your nav computer. Um, maybe it's pre-programmed in there or whatever else. Okay, so we do have a maneuverability of 2D plus 1, a space of 10. Atmosphere-wise, we can go 1,200 kilometers an hour. We have a hull of 2D and shields of 2D plus 1. So hull and shields are pretty much a standard. Uh, shields just above that. Not by a lot, but, you know, it's, you know, not too bad. Because um, we do have to remember the TIE Fighter themselves only have a hull of 2D. There are no shields. So this is actually a little bit better than that. Looking at our sensor packet here. We do have passive scanning going out to two kilometers at a zero D. We can do an active scan out to three and a half kilometers at a one D. Search is four kilometers at plus two D and focus at 200 meters at a plus three D to our roll. We do have two laser cannons in the front with a fire control of two D and does five damage. So this is doing better than the base TIE fighter. Uh, when we come to the TIE IN, we are at about the same level for damage, but this also has two ion cannons forward facing, it has a fire control of 3D and damage of 4D. So having your ion cannon being able to kind of nullify the electronics on the ship does kind of give it a little bit extra bite to it. Because with that, you can you can take a ship with shields and you can kind of knock the shields out or whatever, and you can kind of wear them down a little bit faster. Uh, or maybe you can completely cripple the vessel and you can just slowly pick away at them. So without them being able to fire back. With that, being a ship that we don't typically get to see, it's not a bad ship. Um, it does have a little lacking here. Uh, but keep in mind, this is more of a Rebel Alliance version of it. Uh, in the Wikipedia, they had more of a general align, you know, for what, whoever else. So chances are your hyperdrive would most likely be a times two, not a times one. But with that being said, it's not a bad ship. It's great to see. And we're giving it a little bit of fame here. So, uh, again, it's... Some of the ships that we don't typically get to see, so here we are. With that, thanks for visiting. It's always appreciated. Hope you like the series. Uh, hope you have a wonderful day, and we'll see you in the next video.